Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial for Am Creator. Today we're going to be looking at bone meal and how you can basically make your own bone meal that basically places any type of block in the game uh, regardless if it's a flower or grass or anything like that. You can basically create uh, anything, any blocks to generate on top of the surface of other blocks like grass or dirt or stuff like that. So what we'll be doing today is looking at how this basically works. I have it set up so it has particle and biome support. I'll be demonstrating that in just a second. Uh, there are only two, two biomes basically set up at the moment. There is the uh, extreme hill biome and the grassland, but it's really easy to customize and set up your own biomes as well and it should be cross mod supported as well. So, so let's take a look, quick look at the system for the bone meal. If we right click anywhere on the grass block, it will generate some particles and place down some random flowers. Now these are randomly generated and chosen. So the chances of it being in this exact same pattern are very low. And if we go over here, we can do that and it will try finding an air block for the provided flowers and then it will automatically generate a random flower and if there's grass or some other stuff like that in the way then it will try to avoid that as best as it can so let's go over to the extreme hell biome we'll just right click on the grass and as you can see it's different flowers than the ones down there so you can basically generate your own uh, biome based flowers very similar to how Minecraft has the flowers all set up in their bone meal. So again, just some random ones. And that's basically what it looks like. All right, so let's hop into Amp Creator and I will show you the code. It's only one global procedure and uh, one actual item. So let's go quickly take a look at that. So for resources, you're going to want one item texture, and I've just got a basic uh, bone meal shape, and then I've retextured it to make it my own. And then what I've done is I've created a basic item, and I've used that item texture, and then under properties, I have it set up to go to 64. I've just basically given it a GUI name and left all the rest of the settings as default doesn't have an inventory and it doesn't need a trigger at all. So let's move on to the procedure and this is where things start getting a little bit more complicated. I'll do my best to explain how this all works. It's uh, pretty repetitive like for example this part right down here just controls the generation of the flowers. Uh, up here you have this condition right here which basically tests for the biomes that it's in and then we have a whole bunch of other repeaters and stuff and that that'll explain in just a second so what are we first doing we're actually testing if the player has in their main hand so their main hand of their the provided player uh, the bone meal item and then what we're doing is we're going to swing the main hand of the provided entity, so the player's hand, uh, main hand, and then what we're doing is we're going to run all this on the server side, so basically not on client side. After which we're going to set a couple uh, local variables, so over here we have a few different types of variables uh, going on, I'll explain them as we uh, come up and see them. So the first three are pause X, pause Y, and pause Z. Now these basically control the area which the bone meal basically will take effect in. And I believe it's a five by five area. So we have to actually offset this two blocks, uh, negative coordinates. So we can basically generate a round area of a five by five by five. If we don't offset it, then what it's going to do is it's going to spawn it from the north, west, and down corner, and then provide it all on the positive coordinates. So by offsetting it, we basically create a centered sphere of where we basically right-click the item with our uh, in our main hand. 
So this number obviously needs to be a uneven number and then what you would do is you would subtract one and then divide that by two and then that's the number you need to offset it by. All right, so now that we have the repeater, we have a few different things going on the repeater. So let's take a look at the repeater itself. Now this controls the area of which it actually happens. I said that before. So what's going on here is we're going to create a repeater inside a repeater and inside a repeater. And what this does is it's going to run a total of 20, 25 times, I think. Five times five times five, so whatever that is. And then what we're doing is we're basically running our main script for basically placing the flowers or whatever thing that we want to do in here. And then what we need to do is reset the coordinates. So this is actually going to run and increase X, pause X by one every time. So it's gonna run for five times. So this is going to take the relative coordinate minus two and then it's gonna increase that by five every time. And then what it's going to do is after this is run, it's going to go and uh, reset the X, and then it's going to increase C by one. And then that's gonna run five times, and then it's going to go to the outer, uh, outer repeater, which controls the Y coordinates. And then it's going to reset X, and it's going to reset Z, which it will eventually continue until it does the rest of the remainder. And then what it's going to do is increase y by one. So basically it's going to do uh, y, this, and this, and then it's going to go back here, and this is gonna run five times, and then it's gonna go and set this number to two. And it's gonna go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and then it's gonna go one, and then it's gonna just keep doing that until it has enough chances to find the block underneath. After which, uh, what it's gonna do is basically remove the item in the, in the player's main hand. So we're basically setting the main hand of the provided entity, getting the number of the items in the provided entity's main hand, and then we're going to subtract that by one, and we're gonna make sure that it's the same as the item in our main hand. So we know that the item in our main hand is this item right here. So outside of that, we just have the code to cover. I'll minimize some of this so it's a little bit easier to understand. So what we're doing is random chance. Now this is basically going to control, it's a local variable, it controls the random chance the flower will generate. So there is a random chance that if the block at that location can support a flower itself, it's going to have a random chance of basically generating it. So in our case, we're setting a random or a local variable, a random number, and then we're testing if that number is equal to or greater than 0 0.5. So it has a 50% chance of actually running. After which we're testing for the block above. So the current block where we're actually place, basically generating the block, so the current block location. If it's air or cave air, those are the two types of air that we need to test for. And then what we're also testing for is the blocks that it can generate on. So there are three main blocks that grass can generate on and very similar to bone meal. It can generate on grass, it can generate on dirt zero, which is your basic dirt, and then it can also generate on puzzle. So these are your main three different types of things for bone meal, although if you're accounting the bone meal being used in the water, then it also has sand and other types of things as well, but we're not gonna be covering that in today's video. Then down below is another variable that we have basically set. We're basically testing or setting a local variable called random flower and we're sending this number to a, a random number and we have a random flower local variable right here. So what we have in that box controls our basic properties for our biomes. So these are our biomes. If you want to add a new biome then you just go click on the gear icon, go else if, and then you drag that over here, and then you basically set up your biomes in this area. Uh, you need to use an or statement in order to test for multiple biomes. So 
that's basically how that's all set up. And if you want to remove it, you just remove that and plop it back down like that. And that's basically how you can shorten the code. So basically what we're doing here is we're testing for two types of vanilla biomes. We're testing if it is a planes biome or a mutated planes biome. I think that's a flower planes or something like that. Sunflower planes might be. And what we're doing in there is we're basically testing for the random flower equal to greater than. And then what we're doing is testing for a number a for that particular flower. So we're going to, because I have four flowers set up, I have it set to 0 0.75, 0 0.5, and 0 0.25. And then anything that it doesn't fit in those ranges is going to be this blue flower right here, which is the other 25%. So that's basically how the flowers are set up. And what it's doing is it's just basically spawning the uh, composter particles. You can set up custom particles here and it's replacing the block in the current location uh, and not keeping the state or the MBT tags. You can set this up the way you want to, but I basically disabled it just to make it a little bit easier. And we're just basically placing it where the air block is. So that's the other part. And then what we're doing down below is basically if it's not a specific type of biome, then we're just creating a generic um, bunch of flowers or blocks that you want to generate outside of that biome. So it still runs, just it's not very specific to a particular biome. So if it's not a planes biome or a plane, mutated planes biome, then this script down here under the else statement will run and that's what we were seeing in the extreme hill biome is this script would be basically running so basically that's all there is to it again i will make sure to provide the script under its own workspace and project on my github for the m creator examples that i've been collecting and outside of that that it's pretty straightforward Hopefully you guys learned something new today. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask the community in the comments and hopefully someone will be able to help you with that. And outside of that, thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.